Hi gents, today's lesson is on evaporation and condensation. So by the end of today's lesson, you should be able to explain what is happening during evaporation and condensation. So that's talking about what's happening on a particle level, effectively using the kinetic theory model that we've already covered to explain these processes. You should also be able to explain why evaporation and condensation have a cooling stroke heating effect. Um, you should be able to recall the factors that affect the rate of evaporation and also uh, be able to recall the main differences between evaporation and boiling. We know that boiling only occurs at 100 degrees Celsius at sea level, but evaporation occurs at much, much low, lower temperatures. And we know this because um, you know, puddles formed when it rains uh, evaporate and form water vapour even on very very cold days so water does not need to be anywhere near its boiling point in order for evaporation to take place now we need to be able to explain why this is the case we need to explain be able to explain what is happening uh, in terms of the particles within the fluid um, to, to to cause that evaporation to occur so from our work on the kinetic theory model, we know that liquids are made up of fast moving particles. So they're zooming around within the material um, and it's the average kinetic energy of those particles that indicates the temperature. So the higher the average kinetic energy, the higher the temperature of the substance. But it's really important to realize that not all of those particles are moving at the same speed. There's going to be quite a wide distribution of energies. Some are going to have a very small amount of energy, going to be moving quite slowly. Others are going to have a large amount of kinetic energy. They're going to be moving quite fast. Now, if some of the faster moving particles happen to be at the surface, they might have enough energy to be able to break free from the surface. When they do that, they're going to leave the liquid and that is what evaporation is. It's actually evaporation is those high energy particles leaving the surface and effectively becoming a gas. Now, this is really, really important to us because if you think about what's happening in terms of the average kinetic energy of the remaining particles, here I've got a set of numbers. The average of those numbers is five. If I remove the most energetic particles, so I'm taking out all my nines here, the average of the remaining particles has dropped. Now, if we bring this back to our liquid, what that does is it decreases the temperature because the most energetic particles have left, the average kinetic energy of the remaining particles decreases and hence the temperature of the liquid decreases. So evaporation actually has a cooling effect. Um, and it's why we sweat when we sweat the water evaporates from our skin. In doing so, the most energetic particles are leaving the fluid, and so the temperature of the fluid decreases. Our, our um, body then uh, emits heat, so effectively the water is con uh, conducts the heat away from our body. Um, that in turn raises the temperature of the liquid. You get more evaporation taking place, more cooling effect. And so the actual um, evaporation is what's cooling us with the sweat. Um, so in, in general, you know, we're getting a transfer of energy away from a liquid. And when we talked about energy transfers in year eight. We said it was just conduction, convection and radiation to simplify things. But actually, this is a fourth mode of heat transfer. We're actually getting a transfer of heat from the liquid to the gas by the, uh, that process of evaporation. Now, the reverse can also be said for condensation. So when a, a gas that contains fluid uh, comes into contact with a cool surface, uh, the uh, average kinetic energy of the particles in the gas decreases and that causes it to condense into a liquid. Now, if that is onto a surface, we obviously get condensation. You might see this in a, uh, the interior of a car with the inside of a window um, but it also happens just in the air so as um, uh, air rises it cools and that can then uh, cause um, water vapor that is held in the air to condense and form little water droplets and that's what we see as clouds obviously if those clouds then become too dense um, those water droplets get bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually they're going to fall uh, in the form of rain so um, it's really important to realize that this condensation also has effectively a warming effect because you know, we, <coughs> we're having 
uh, that the um, high energy particles from the air condensing into the liquid raising the average kinetic energy of the liquid um, so we're actually going to get the complete opposite effect where condensation actually has a slight warming effect so something else that we need to uh, cover comes up very regularly in the IGCSE is the factors that affect evaporation well the first one and the most obvious one is the temperature of the liquid clearly if the temperature of the liquid is higher the average kinetic energy of the particles is going also going to be high and so there's going to be more particles in the substance that have enough energy to escape from the surface and so we're going to get more evaporation also the surface area of the liquid is going to have quite a big impact if you've got more particles at the surface then you're going to be able to get more that are actually going to be leaving from that surface um, if you had a small container that had a very small surface area you're not going to get a huge amount of evaporation taking place from that surface whereas if you put it into a large tray that has a very large surface area then we're going to get a lot of evaporation taking place because there's more particles at the surface enabling them to leave another factor that is going to affect the rate of evaporation is the boiling point of the liquid if the boiling point of the liquid is lower then the amount of energy required in order for the bonds to be broken is also going to be lower and so if at any given temperature you're going to have more particles in the substance that have an, enough energy to be able to break those uh, bonds because the amount of energy required to break the bonds is lower so if you've got say for example um, alcohol alcohol is going to evaporate much much quicker than water uh, if all the other conditions are the same because the boiling point of alcohol is much lower you might know uh, have felt this if you if you've ever had any kind of anti alcohol based antiseptic um, uh, placed on your skin it instantly feels cold I was just talking about sweat and the cooling effect that sweat has well if you place some uh, um, alcohol based um, uh, uh, antiseptic on your skin evaporation takes place almost immediately because the, the boiling point of the alcohol is so much lower and so it makes your skin feel very cold I mean the, the, the actual substance itself isn't cold it's the it's the evaporating of the, or the evaporation process that causes that cooling and makes it feel cold okay um, so whether or not air is moving over the surface is actually going to have quite a large impact on the rate of evaporation what we need to realize is both evaporation and condensation are happening at the same time so you know, not only are you going to be having particles that are gaining enough kinetic energy to leave the surface of the liquid there's also going to be uh, water molecules in the uh, air above the liquid that actually are lo losing energy and actually falling back down into the liquid now that's going to be happening simultaneously um, and if some of those particles that have just evaporated are blown away from the surface there's not going to be an opportunity for them to fall back down into the liquid um, so if by blowing across the top of the uh, liquid um, you can actually um, increase the amount of evaporation what you're actually doing is decreasing the amount of condensation that's taking place but that actually obviously has an overall effect of increasing the rate of evaporation um, you, you've all done this you've, you've done this for years by blowing over the surface of food or blowing over the surface of a cup of tea um, what you're doing is you are uh, you're blowing away the particles that have evaporated from the surface and stopping them from condensing back down into the liquid that is going to increase the rate of evaporation and therefore going to cool down your food or your uh, hot tea or coffee um, very similar to the last one the humidity of the air you know, the humidity of the air is, is effectively how much fluid is stored within the air and uh, the higher the amount of fluid within the air the higher the amount of condensation into the liquid um, so again you've got to have a nice understanding that both evaporation and condensation are occurring at the same time so if the humidity of the air is very low so if it's very dry um, there's not a lot of uh, water in it obviously the rate of evaporation is going to be much higher than the rate of condensation and therefore the overall effect is going to be one of evaporation and we're going to get a lot of cooling so that's why uh, a dry heat is, is is a lot nicer than a, than a, a kind of a, um, a humid heat because you know, you're, you're sweating actually has a good cooling effect however in a really humid environment where the humidity is very high there's lots of water stored in the air 
you're going to have evaporation and condensation happening at effectively the same rate. Um, and so the overall effect will be zero. There isn't going to be a, a, a cooling effect. So if you go to places around the world where you've got this really humid heat, you, you, you know, your sweat just stays in your body. You get really clammy. It's not particularly very nice. You don't get the same cooling effect from it. So the humidity of the air is actually a, a, an important factor that term, determines the, the rate of, of, of evaporation. Again, what it's really doing is affecting the rate of condensation. Um, but the overall effect is one of uh, 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 evaporation. OK, so we're going to finish by looking at the main differences between boiling and evaporation. It's important you understand these differences. Uh, there have been a number of questions over the last few years in the IGCSE that ask you to uh, list these differences. So the, the first one and the most obvious is the fact that boiling only occurs at 100 degrees Celsius, that is um, at sea level. Obviously, you know, we talked when we were talking about pressure that if you go to a higher altitude, the pressure is going to be lower and therefore the boiling point is actually going to be uh, lower. You do need to go to significantly high uh, altitudes in order to get low enough pressures for it to really be making a difference. But um, in general, we always say that, that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Whereas you know, evaporation happens at much lower temperatures. You know, you know, we, we know this, as I said at the beginning of the presentation, um, because of the fact that you know, puddles um, uh, disappear within a couple of hours after it stopped raining. Um, and obviously that water is not boiling. It's not at 100 degrees Celsius. Um, the other thing that's a really important difference is the fact that evaporation only occurs at the surface of the liquid, whereas boiling happens throughout the liquid. You know, we, we can see when we um, have got something that's boiling that the water is turning into a gas throughout the liquid. In fact, most of it is happening at the uh, base of the uh, saucepan, um, forming bubbles and then rising up through the liquid. So we're actually seeing the, the gas that is being formed during that process bubbling through the liquid. Um, with, obviously with evaporation that doesn't happen, evaporation is only happening at the surface. And finally, um, uh, if you are, are ever asked to give a third explanation, I mean I'd always stick with the first two, but for a third one, um, boiling requires an external source of energy to continue, whereas evaporation does not. And why is this? Well, you know, we've already talked about the cooling effect of boiling, uh, sorry, of evaporation, but obviously boiling has, does the same thing. Um, <clears throat> whilst um, the water is boiling, um, the most energetic particles are the ones that are leaving the liquid, and that's going to decrease the average kinetic energy of the remaining particles um, and therefore decrease the temperature of the liquid. And if the temperature of the liquid falls below the boiling point, then obviously it's going to stop boiling. So in order for boiling to continue to occur, um, you need some kind of external energy source in the liquid that is continually replacing the energy that's been lost due to the most energetic particles leaving the surface of the liquid or leaving the liquid. Obviously, with evaporation, because evaporation occurs at any temperature, um, we, we, we don't need to um, worry about the fact that the most energetic particles have left. Yes, the temperature is going to have decreased, but evaporation is going to continue anyway because we're still going to have this distribution of energies within the liquid.